with Bob Kyla of Columbia, Columbia Sports. Bob, welcome. Great to have you inside the cube. Yesterday we we covered you remotely, and uh, we were so good. You know, we saw we saw <laughs> you last night. We uh, we wanted to have a conversation. We got a great audience here. We got a couple thousand people watching live, and uh, we just want to have a conversation about what you guys are doing, what you're seeing at this event. You know, kind of why you're here. We, we met about. yesterday, so or was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember. It's, it's been, been three days. So you're in the trenches um, with as a customer of uh, uh, SAP. Um, well, you're moving your entire system over to SAP. Um, the new SAP, clean sheet of paper almost. What are the, and you're using virtualization. So one, tell us a little bit about the company and some of the issues around the tech that you're involved in. Sure. Uh, in the midst, as he had mentioned, migrating from our current ERP system, JD Edwards, today, iSeries, over to SAP. So it's a, tra it's a supply chain transformation, essentially transforming the entire business. Um, and from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, Columbia Sportswear already uh, invested uh, heavily in terms of storage with EMC. And uh, we're essentially 80% virtualized already. So going 80%. in, eighty percent virtualized. Okay. Yes, um, there are some applications that uh, are still in the midst of, of migrating over. Okay, so that's an eight, that's an application number, not a that physical server number. Right? Okay. That is correct. It's an application right. number. Um, and so going into the SAP project, uh, we obviously wanted to go with the technologies with the expertise we had in house already, since SAP was going to be new to the business anyways, and we knew that we were going to build uh, talent within. Um, and, and also uh, bringing talent in from, from outside, um, we didn't want to invest that heavily in terms of technology. We wanted, we wanted to go with technology, number one, what we knew, and what we knew that worked well for us. So that transition from, uh, with our current environment was, was relatively easy to make. Um, so essentially, you know, going completely virtualized from our sandbox dev QA and production environment was uh, relatively easy from a technology perspective for us to make. So what's your role at, at Columbia? So I'm the SAP basis manager. Okay. Um, so I handle the application basis uh, from the SAP perspective and all the way down. We also have a expertise from a storage perspective, server, and, and a VM side of things too. So we are a very uh, cohesive uh, group. And you say we have you, as part of your group, or that's correct. Or, but is that part of your responsibility? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So so it's interesting. You've got you kind of play this dual role of application and, and infrastructure. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of times, especially at, at events like this, uh, there are, there's not a lot of infrastructure talk. I mean, infrastructure is like the raw material right, right. You know, that you need. But, but, um, but putting on your, your application hat, you know, what's changing in infrastructure and why does infrastructure even matter? Isn't that somebody else's problem? I mean, yeah. Well, that, that's a great question. Um, it, it, it does because we want to make sure we're able to scale um, as businesses change, business processes change. We're able to spin up environments on a relatively very quick fashion um, versus past life where you would have to either have that equipment available or place orders for it, right? So we're able to utilize the technology within the uh, vBlock is, is what we're running our SAP implement our, our uh, entire infrastructure on, allows us to spin up environments very quick um, and also uh, be able to scale out if that's needed. Right. So, for giving an example, if we are if we are in a position where we're growing, um, and in the past you would have to acquire more hardware, now we're able to spin up these other environments, uh, essentially push of a button, um, versus business waiting and, and and holding holding the business from a growing perspective. So, v block's interesting. It's the single logical block of infrastructure. It's compute. It's storage. It's networking. Yes. You put it in, you know, people say it's, EMC says it's cloud optimized. Um, is it cloud optimized? Yes. I mean, what, what does that yes. mean? So from a cloud optimization perspective, we are, everything's in, everything's in the cloud, right? So it's a single point of, uh, of, of call in terms of if you have issues. In the past, if there was a, if there was a storage issue, you would have to call a storage vendor. If there was a, if there was a blade issue, you'd have to call the blade vendor. And if there's a networking perspective, you'd have to call the networking uh, folks, right? That's assuming you could figure out which it was, right? That's the yeah. problem, that's the issue. And actually we ran into that very, the very problem. Mm -hmm not knowing where the issue was, and we had very critical business, tier two, not tier one, tier two applications that were down. And we essentially had the entire group calling the uh, respective vendors. We finally figured out what the issue was. Well, now we're calling VCE, right, which is, which is managing that infrastructure for us, and they know where to route that call because they're all there. 
So VC, VC has gone through a few name changes, right? There's some growing yes. pains there. There was Acadia, then it was a virtual computing environment. Uh, so now it's a virtual computing Correct. environment. So there is one throat to choke, right? It's not, do I call VMware or Cisco or EMC? It's a, I call VCE, right? Yes, You've exactly. got a big staff, and, and yes. that's working. I mean, you've, that's worked very you well. You have us. issues, support issues, you call, you know, a single point of contact. Is that exactly, right? exactly. Which, which allows us again. We we also take advantage of their center of excellence in Santa Clara, and basically what that is. Yeah, we've been there. On the Cuba is actually filmed there. Uh, okay. Hong, Hong Quek, do you know Hong? Yes. Uh, yeah, he's runs yes. the center of excellence, and Ralph Lindenlob, I think, is. Uh, we saw him last night. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it, it's been great because it allows it allows the VCE to really concentrate and, and have the engineers on staff what they're really good at, right? And it allows us to uh, uh, help the business. Right, so we can concentrate on the business processes, and they can actually help us POC some some applications that we're just thinking of, or they're coming from the business, right? Um, so we can make sure that things are integrated seamlessly, so we're not actually prototyping in our infrastructure. And they've got all the labs, and they've got all the experts on staff, and and that's helped us uh, uh, prototype and uh, evaluate the the various tools within the V Block. So you're kind of breaking down some of these stovepipes of, of infrastructure. Um, does it change your organization at all, or how does it change your organization? Yeah. So from an organi yeah, uh, the SAP has has changed your organization, right? Uh, it's you were how so in, in a way that it's it's a new application. It's 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 an unknown. It's the unknown, right? Um, we do have 30 experts, SAP experts on staff full time that that Columbia has. Uh, so essentially a Columbia-led project, this SAP project is, and we have uh, about half a dozen or so um, SAP consultants that are helping us along, making sure we're doing things best practice-wise, but at the end of the day, it is a Columbia-led effort, and we are going to be the ones that are going to be supporting that application And versus uh, typical implementations where consultants are coming in and they're doing the implementation and they do the knowledge transfer and they roll off. Um, well, we're actually doing it ourselves. We're not really having the consultants do a lot of the configuration for us. So that's different. You know, so that's really changing our, our, our business model. Um, there's a lot of experience on that group. A couple of hundred years of experience from an SAP perspective. So there's a lot of different uh, um, experiences, good and bad, that's, that's come together and, and really helped us uh, um, really launch this project. Um, and everything's going fairly well. Uh, we're on track. Everything's green, which is essentially a, a good sign from the from dashboard side. It says green. Yes. No which reds is green. on there. Correct. Yes. <laughs> so that's very important. Um, the requirements are coming in. Development is starting to take off. And Do you use a formal portfolio management system? In, we, in actually, uh, we actually don't. Uh, there, it's, we, uh, we're Spreadsheets? No, uh, SharePoint. We're using SharePoint. SharePoint. Cool. We're using Solution Manager for all of our document management. Okay, so that, that works. Uh, and yeah, that works very well. So all of our, our, our all of our KDDs, our VPDs, our, um, all those documents are all stored within Solution Manager, and we're able to approve them and uh, what have you within there. We're also uh, taking advantage of the whole charm uh, change management within Solution Manager as well. Um, the ticketing system is also integrated with our Remedy um, environment, which we do today for help desk tickets, things like that. And that's kicks out, kicks out a ticket to Remedy and also goes to SAP if there's SAP particular issues. Paul, what do you make of all the... Uh the messaging that SAP's putting forth today, uh, a lot of HANA and memory and mobility yeah. are some of the two big things. And, and are those, do those resonate with you as an IT practitioner? Are they, are they you know, near-term fundamental tactical to your business, or are you still sort of in the experimental stage? We are still in the experimental phase, but we want to keep that in mind as we grow, right? Um, meaning that if there are you know, other, other pieces within the SAP that may make, um, may make the Columbia um, uh, vision, then we want to keep that in the back of my mi back of our minds as we uh, grow within the V Block environment. Um, there's talks at the keynote that you know Hana basically with an ERP, uh, it's going to start supporting by 2014, I believe uh, was was it was the time frame. So we're still we're still ways out from that. Um, by then we should be completely live globally, um, and uh, so we're able to at least swap out. Um, the technology we have in our V-Block if we, if we make that decision. So it's not like a complete uh, rip and replace, right? So we, we'll be able to kind of uh, take advantage of the infrastructure that we have today. 
What were your concerns about sort of virtualizing some of your mission critical or business critical applications? Was, was, were there concerns around that, whether performance or just putting in another yeah. a layer? Was was there some discussion that went on? Was Absolutely. It, was it heated? You know, it was, yeah. yeah FW, yeah. we're not doing that. Or was <laughs> right. it, so wait a minute, how do we make sure? I mean, take us inside and, and share that because there's a lot of practitioners out there that we talk to have a, have a concern about putting that extra layer in front of their app or on top of their, 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 it, their systems. And, and in between that, the system and the application, I want the raw hardware. What are, what are your You're absolutely right, and you hit it right there. Yeah, it was it was very uh, vocal, mm -hmm. um, and um, because it was it was relatively new with from 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 that uh, SAP ERP perspective, right? Um, and especially folks that weren't familiar with with VMware. So with the talent that we um, that came on board when we said virtualization SAP, they're like, whoa. whoa why I've never seen it never seen it done it's just folks experience not and, and not the exposure around it from it from a technology perspective um, this is actually my second uh, a company that I worked at that we virtualized um, so I knew it worked um, and also we've had we've got folks uh, internally that knew it worked so it was really trying to make sure that we talked to other customers and we built a case around the with the help of SAP and in and, and EMC um, to provide the business to make sure that they're at ease and uh, and that was actually the the kicker right there um, they all felt comfortable enough that you know with all of our expertise and um, understood the there was uh, it's not an alienated uh, way of, of implementing ERP solution and um, and they're happy with it we we're able to you know we were able to prototype it and all that stuff so it's 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 uh, yeah it was challenging absolutely well other practitioners have told me it's a big deal that the ISV in this case SAP was behind it and clearly SAP is very you know, embracing of VMware and virtualization, obviously EMC is, right, yeah. because they own VMware, but uh, but not all ISVs are. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of friction in the Oracle base. Um, actually, you know, most other, I mean, IBM seems to be very much embracing SAP, you know, Oracle's embracing of Oracle VM, but um, but that's a, that's a big issue with a lot of people. Um, so my other question is, what was the business case around virtualization? Was it, was it just Efficiency, cost savings, you know, flexibility. What what were some of those drivers? Recovery. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So all of the above. Uh, operational expense was was obviously the big one. Um, again, we didn't want to add additional infrastructure bodies if we didn't have to. Um, we had the expertise already internally, right? We already knew that we were going to get. Um, the, the SAP group was already ramping up in terms of, of body counts anyways. That was obviously one of them. The other piece of it was we wanted to go with the technology that we knew and, then, and that we knew that worked well. Um, you know, we've got, again, 80% of us, 80% of our applications are virtualized. Um, tier 1, Tier 2 applications, all Tier 3 applications are, are virtualized. Our current ERP system, JD, JD Edwards, it doesn't allow us to virtualize it, um, which was unbelievable uh, you know from the standpoint of yeah we're able to actually virtualize our ERP environment and we're able to scale um, the footprint of hardware and uh, the actual physical uh, folks that we needed the talent on, on staff was was relatively small um, so it, yeah it's, it's been it's it's been great uh, from that perspective and, and plus we've got a lot of a lot of great uh, support right I mean we continually talk to you know, with, with EMC and customers uh, around um, different experiences and how we can do things uh, more effectively and how we could help them out along and why we made our decision. As peers. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. It's all about networking. It's all about real experiences and it's about sharing those experiences we, we, together. That's the founding premise of Wikibon is let peers talk to peers. Yeah, it's, and, and that's they get where it's Much at. better information. That's why we love talking to IT practitioners like, like Bob. We're here with Bob Kyla of Columbia Sportswear, an IT practitioner that is um, using SAP, using uh, a block, a logical block of infrastructure, in this case uh, vBlock, using virtualization, um, looking at off into the future things like HANA and, and, and mobility. I would think mobility at some point, you know, given your supply chain, you know, comes in. I mean, the whole mobile enterprise, is that getting a lot of discussion? Is it on the roadmap? Or? It's, uh, yeah, it's definitely getting a lot of discussion. Um, you know, being here at Sapphire, those are the two buzzwords, mobility and uh, the HANA. Yeah, right. Memory, that's, right. Yeah, that's that's the whole that's the buzzwords here, and uh, it's funny because my my director actually had pointed out, uh, hey, what are you hearing about the whole mobility and kind of thing? I'm like, oh, it's it's pretty big. So I've got a lot of information. Now this is a brand new implementation. We don't right now the scope is e ERP, 
but as lot, you know, a lot of the traditional legacy stuff, right? Right. Okay. But it's starting. It starts to build up a little bit. You know how that goes, right? The business. Oh, can we do this in SAP? Can we do this in SAP? Can we do? Yes, we can. But let's let's take it piecemeal at a time, so, right? So, in thinking specifically about your SAP implementation of ERP and the virtualization, mm -hmm. um, and maybe even let's throw in that whole V block discussion. What? If anything, would you do differently, and what advice would you give your fellow peers if they're thinking about going down this path? I would really, we were fortunate enough that uh, it's a greenfield implementation, right? So we were starting from, from scratch. We weren't migrating from an, from a R3 or, or an older version of SAP. Now, if, if any recommendation I can give to customers, I would recommend that you'd want to attack it uh, per module. I wouldn't do a big bang migration, you want to make sure that you're able to scale enough with, with uh, the various SAP applications one at a time. Um, I'd, I'd highly recommend that. Uh, but if you're doing a, a brand new implementation, then we can, we, we can definitely uh, share our experiences around that and our, our learnings around that and what we would do different. Right now, we wouldn't do anything different. I think we've got, uh, we've got great talent and great, great uh, partnerships uh, with customers and what have you that have, um, have shared their experiences, and it's, it's worked out very well for us. Did you use a third-party service provider or a consultant or the, the services capabilities of any of the vendors involved? Or um, were they instrumental? They were because we essentially did a bake off with with some technologies. You know, we looked at it uh, from a standpoint of okay, we the only new piece of the whole V block for us was the compute, right? Was the UCS, and uh, we already had EMC storage. We already, we already had the VMware for Hyper V, and we had HP uh, blades. So we did a bake off with the HP blades and the UCS blades, essentially. And from what it was, what, what it, what we were getting or not getting out of it was pretty much equal. So it was, you know, everything else was we were already, we already owned and we already were quite familiar with it. Um, so that was the only bake off that we had was with, with a, with a compute power, and uh, the, the, the decision was relatively straightforward. It wasn't, you know. Um, totally off the, off the, from left field type of thing. It was uh, really, really simple to, to decide. What do you make of these, um, I think EMC calls them proven solutions, IBM calls them red books, right? They're basically either reference architectures or white papers or technical documentations. Here's an actual solution, real world solution that we've deployed, tested, here's all the best practices, here's how you configure it, here's, you know, here's the business impact. I mean, do you use, Freebies like that, I call them freebies, right? They're, they're services that, that are sort of lost leaders for the vendor. Are they useful to, to you as an IT practitioner? Yes, yes. Uh, we definitely looked at a lot of the white papers around uh, SAP best practices mm -hmm. virtualization, you know, and how we could utilize HA, DR, um, around, around those two technologies. And I find them very useful because they're actual real life experiences versus um, listening to a sales guy, right? Um, you know, so it's, it's, very, it's very important that you get the those. Does that. I mean, the internet is, creates democratization of the vendor pitches. Right. Completely yeah. eliminates the fluff. What, right, um, exactly. We started maybe just touched on it, but I, was, I always ask practitioners like yourself, what drives you nuts about Vendors. I mean, if you had to give advice to the vendors out there, what would you tell them? Just tell me how it is. Tell me straight up. You know, no um, surprises. No surprises. Yeah. Tell me what. Tell me the whys, and tell me why not, and roadmaps around. You know what the plans are. I know it, 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 it's ob obviously they make it seem like you know it could do anything, but real, let's be realistic and uh, let's share some other experience. What other customers have done it to kind of acquire or or attack that solution. You know, um, versus they could they could do everything. Just tell me the way. It yeah, because at the end of the day, I mean, you guys are savvy. You talk to each other. You're going to get to the truth eventually. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to spend a lot of money until you get it, to the truth. And it's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. And if you can build those relationships and that trust, then it's 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 a vested interest for both parties. And I think that's very important. Share the risk. Absolutely. In, in a way, yeah. All right, Bob Kyla, Columbia Sportswear, great interview. Thanks for coming back on the Cube. Yeah, got, it's great uh, to be here. Thanks, spots. guys. It was a pleasure meeting yeah, you last you night too. and today. And, yeah, uh, love to have you back. And awesome. We'll see you around. Great to, yeah, great to see care. you again. Yeah.